Hello, my name is Mike Bullette with the National Native Network, a program of the Intertribal Council of Michigan. Welcome to the NNN webinar series on cancer risk reduction in Indian country. This webinar is titled Portraits of Suzanne, an Osage Woman's Story of Loving the Sun and Living with Skin Cancer. This technical assistance webinar is being hosted by the National Native Network, which offers technical assistance and resources for commercial tobacco and cancer prevention and control throughout Indian Country and the Indian Health Service Clinical Support Center. Your presenters today are Regina Idiot, PhD, Cherokee Nation member. Assistant Professor from the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Also, Bobby McWilliams Leasley, an Osage Nation member, and Suzanne Walsh, an Osage Nation member. We're pleased to offer continuing education credits for participants in this webinar. No commercial interest support was used to fund this activity. This activity is designated one contact hour for nurses and physicians. To obtain a certificate of continuing education, you must be registered for the course, participate in the webinar in its entirety, and submit a completed post-webinar survey. At the conclusion of this activity, the healthcare team will be able to examine skin cancer prevention and detection among American Indians and Alaska Natives, implement effective screening for early detection and prevention of skin cancer, and incorporate holistic strategies to enhance the conversation about skin cancer in American Indian and Alaska Native communities. If you have any questions during the presentation for our panelists, please type them into the question box on your Zoom panel. Questions will be answered during the last few minutes of today's webinar. And now, thank you very much, and I will toss it to Regina Idiot. Thank you, Mike, and, and thank you, Heather. We're so grateful to be a part of your program in this webinar series. Um, as Mike said, uh, my name is Regina Iloate, CEO, uh, Regina Iloate Dawado Chichalagi. I'm a citizen of Cherokee Nation, and uh, in a few days, I'll be an associate professor, actually. <laughs> Today, I'm assistant, but yeah, on the first, I'll be associate professor in health promotion um, at the University of Nebraska Medical Center's College of Public Health in the Department of um, Health Promotion. And uh, I've had the absolute honor and privilege to work with uh, Bobby McWilliams Leasley and uh, her mother, Suzanne Walsh, in this, in this project over the course of many years as a part of the Youth Enjoy Science program, which is a, um, a National Cancer Institute funded um, workshop development or yeah, I, I workforce, sorry, workforce development program that's aimed to um, to train up natives like to grow our own uh, indigenous uh, cancer researchers um, and practitioners in, in the health professions. So um, as part of this, Bobby, Bobby has been an amazing uh, cancer research intern over the years working with me and um, and her mom has participated as well. So we get to share with you all uh, our, our story a little bit. Um, of our, our work together. And we'll, we'll all be introducing ourselves a little bit more in depth as we move forward. But um, again, Suzanne, Suzanne Walsh is, uh, is really first and foremost our, our number one presenter today, sharing her personal uh, story of, of living with skin cancer. Um, and she's a member of Osage Nation and Bobby McWilliams Leasley, her daughter and cancer researcher um, is also Osage Nation. And, so I'll move forward from here. And we're just super grateful. I do wanna say that we're incredibly grateful to the National Native Network and Mike and, and Heather for inviting us to be a part of this and for this opportunity to meet with you all and, and share stories and, and learn together. We do welcome questions um, and, um, and any feedback, input ideas, comments that you have as we move forward, because we're continuing this work. It doesn't, you know, it, it's not, it hasn't ended and it doesn't end here. And so it's really important work we're doing and there's so little work in, related to skin cancer in, in Indian country. So um, thank you for bringing this to all of our attention and giving us this time. 
So today our plan is to just give introductions to the three of us um, as members of this research uh, project. And then I'll be sharing a little more information about that Youth Enjoy Science or YES program um, in skin cancer education and research. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about um, really what, what Bobby's learned in all of her research um, and, and shared with us so, uh, about Native Americans and skin cancer. And then we'll share Suzanne's, Suzanne's story and she'll share her story actually, and then open it up to questions and answers. So Suzanne and Bobby, I'm gonna pass it off to you. Um, and I just wanna add that we're, Super grateful that Suzanne and Bobby could be together today. They're uh, joining us oops, from Oklahoma um, and um, and they get to be together in, in one screen. I wish I was there with you. So it was the three of us, <laughs> um, but I'm gonna pass, pass it over to Suzanne to share a little bit about your, yourself and, and your um, story and how you came to be a part of this with us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So you could tell a little bit about the family and oh okay your okay. I started having skin cancer twenty two years ago. It was discovered, and now it's gotten it. It doesn't seem to get any better, and I have to go to the skin doctor, the dermatologist, every two months. So it doesn't seem to go away. It seems to get worse but I'm trying very hard to keep it under control and keep going to the doctor to be checked. But I usually know what has to be done because I'm so used to it now, whether it's squamos or basal cell or melanoma, melanoma, I've had them both, all of them, all three rather. And I'm trying hard not to get it anymore, but they seem, they keep seeming, seem to come and you don't know when or where, but most of them are on my lower legs and my arms. So, and quite a few on my chest. I just had some done on, on my face and they haven't quite healed, but I'm sure they will eventually. So I'm very fortunate to still be around and have all that skin cancer. Yes, you are. And then in the upper left hand here is my mom and my late father. John Walsh, and then um, on the right is my mom at the um, Pahuska Church. What is the name of the church in Pahuska? Immaculate Conception. Immaculate Conception Church. And then here's um, my mom and dad and nine children in the family. And then to the right is just my mom and I sharing a meal at the Mercantile in Pahuska, Oklahoma, where my grandmother was from. So thank you. <laughs> Yes, thank you for, for doing this. I think it's wonderful. And it'll teach the children to cover up in the sun, which means to maybe wear a t-shirt or suntan lotion. I believe it helps. But for me, I don't I think it's a little bit too late. I'm 91 and I still have can skin cancer, but I still enjoy swimming. So I am outside and I would much rather swim outside than inside. So I am still in the sun, which I shouldn't be, but I'm trying to be careful. Thank you. Thanks, Suzanne. We're getting really nice comments in chat that say, wow, you look amazing for 91. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. People are just thinking the same thing. So I'm seeing really nice comments and you are so beautiful and we are so grateful you're here with us. Um, I'm, I'm curious if you could share just a little bit more with the group about um, your, your experiences um, with swimming and diving and just kind of your history of exposure to the sun growing up. Well, I've been exposed to the sun ever since I was little, and I always loved it. And then I started diving and kept kept doing that. And then I was training for the Olympics in diving. So I have been outdoors about all my life. And my night children have been out with me, too. They Some of them love the sun and some of them really don't. But two of them have skin cancer. 
So I worry about them and they're trying very hard to take care of it. And they both are. So I'm very happy about that. And uh, I don't know what's going to keep me out of the sun. I, I just absolutely love it. But I'm trying, just like everybody else is, trying to cover up and take care of my skin. And it's not easy with mine because it's gotten very bad, but I'll be fine. <laughs> and it'll be okay. And I'll still go outside. So I love all the kids that are in this program and trying to help too with their skin. So I hope everyone uh, loves all this, loves the program you have. It's amazing. And we're very fortunate to have all of you. Thank, thank you. you. Wado, thank you. <laughs> and I know you mentioned earlier that you, um, do you see a dermatologist like every couple months? Can you share a little bit about um, the screening and what you do to prevent it or um, prevent it from progressing or to keep keep yourself safe or, or even what your kids do? Because you said everybody's, you know, trying, um, trying really hard to um, take care of themselves and, and prevent the cancer or treat it in early stages. So I just would love to hear a little more about that experience that you've had with with the doctors and screenings and prevention? <laughs> well, by now I seem to know what is what. And usually it's squamous on my legs and they're the worst. And then my arms and chest, like I've said before, are bad. But the doctor, I show the doctor what I think is bad. And he is very, very good with examining me and telling me what is what is squamous or basal cell. And it's usually one or the other. And that's so much melanoma. I only had um, that a bad one one time. And there's a dent in my arm from them taking so much of, a, of the cancer out of my arm. But I was very fortunate and I still have my arm. So <laughs> I, still, I still love it all. But the doctor's uh, great in examining me. And I go every two months now. So they, could, they can't do, uh, they can't really cut into your skin uh, with insurance, they could only do two at a time. Uh, last time they had to do three because the three were so badly uh, dead with squamos. So they had to do three, but they usually don't. They usually try and do two and then you have to go back every two months to have more done. So, but I'm keeping up with it. Even though I don't like to go, they put a needle in you and it doesn't feel so good. <laughs> yeah. So but at least I'm getting rid of it. Thank you. Yes. You do a good job of checking and screening. I know I keep asking you questions, but I think what you have to share is so important. And I'm, I'm also curious, Suzanne, how, how often do you do like self screenings and, and check your own body yourself so that you catch the things that you do that you bring to the doctor's attention? I don't really have to, uh, worry I, well I worry about it but I know what it is what it is I know every mark on me now um so it's it's usually a raised it looks like a wart with squamous and basal cell bleeds so it's easy to find out which is cancer and what, and what isn't and a few things that I thought were cancer weren't they were pre-cancer so the the Cancer that he examines is usually, they have to cut it out and get rid of it. And they usually do it right away. They don't take a biopsy and then wait. They, they go ahead and do it and then do a biopsy afterwards to tell me what it is. And then they'll call and tell me it was basal cell or squamos. So I can usually tell now what it is though. I don't, I know right away. So thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. You you are your own expert, you know, and I think you bring such a good, you make such a good point there that, you know, we are the, we are the ones who know our bodies and know what's, what's there and what's normal, what's not normal, you know, so um, there's so much um, of a, a big part that we play in, in screening and prevention just by checking ourselves and noticing these things, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you, Regina.
Is there anything else you want to say before we move into um, Bobby's introduction? Oh, I don't think so. Just take tell the children to take care of themselves and uh, be very careful and try not to get sunburned out there in the sun. It's so hot th th this time of year. So please, uh, all you kids out there, be careful and have fun, though. Have fun. Jump in the <laughs> pool, jump the water, <laughs> jump in and out. <laughs> have a good time. Thank you. Thanks, Suzanne. Uh -huh. Okay, from here, I think we'll move forward on the slides to Bobby's introduction. Thank you so much, Suzanne. And we will get more time to share with you and talk more about your story as we move into the um, presentation of the case study. Oh, I guess it's me who goes next, sorry. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, this is great. I get, to, I'll, I'll introduce myself and then I can introduce Bobby a bit and she can share more too. Um, so I think I introduced myself a little bit in the beginning. I'm a citizen of Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma and I'm also the principal investigator, um, one of the principal investigators uh, an MPI actually at, um, for the Youth Enjoy Science program, which is a program that um, conducts a lot of cancer research and various um, cancer research, whether it be community-based participatory research, um, working more with a lot more work focused on cancer prevention and education there um, in the College of Public Health, that, which is which are projects that I get to work on more closely. And then we also have um, projects that work in cancer research labs, so more on the um, lab science, biomedical side of things where students, cancer research interns and mentors are, are conducting cancer research in that form. Um, and um, so in the pictures you see here, you, you'll see my, on the top left is my my mom, who's also Cherokee, my dad, who's Cherokee, and then my grandmother on my dad's side, um, Patricia Robbins, who, um, who also, lived with cancer for she had breast cancer and survived that and um and and then later on in life ended up uh with liver cancer and and that is actually what what um she died with liver cancer from liver cancer and so so this whole project and all of the work that everyone at National Native Network is doing and everyone within the National Cancer Institute and the YES program is is you know just as meaningful to me in my relations as it is, you know, and I can really relate to Bobby and, and Suzanne and, and their shared story because I have have that shared story of that history in my family as well. And so um, it's something that we're we're all working on as the, the three of us and then many other cancer researchers, mentors and and interns um, to, you know, to find new ways and and, and culture-based ways to work to prevent cancer, to treat cancer, to research cancer. Um, so this is this is part of the work that we get to do and we are so grateful for it. Um, and then the picture down below my parents and grandma is a picture with Bobby and I, and then our program manager, Aislin Rookwood, who, um, who is just an incredible support to all of the work we're talking about today. And then the upper right-hand corner is um, picture of me in front of the College of Public Health at UNMC, University of Nebraska Medical Center, where I get to do all this work. Um, I love my job. I'm very grateful for the work we get to do and the ways that we get to do it, um, specifically through an Indigenous lens. And then down below is my family. So that's my baby boy, who's now two and a half, <laughs> and uh, my husband and my sweet, sweet late dog, Nani. Um, so, <laughs> and then below that, you just see a lot of schools that I've had um, the opportunity to both study and, and teach at and do research for and with. So I'm really grateful to all of these schools and all of my teachers um, and mentors that have guided me to the point where, you know, and, and even in the work that I do now, but, but to this place where I get to do this work. So I'm just very grateful to all of them and my ancestors for, for guiding us on this path. And I will pass this on now to Bobby, who I've shared with you all, is a, a member of Osage Nation and a, a former now, she's graduate of the Yes Cancer Research Program and a graduate student at University of Nebraska, Omaha. And Bobby, I'll let you share more about yourself as we move forward through these slides. I, I don't think I can forward the slides here. Mike, can you help us move forward? There we go. 
Okay, Bobby, take it away. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Bobby McWilliams Lee Slee. Um, started out as Bobby McWilliams in 2017 when I met Regina Iduat in um, an introduction to Native American Studies class, and um, and then we were doing research projects, and I was um, researching um, skin cancer. And that's how the whole thing developed our relationship. And then I had been in the YES program for um, four years, I believe. And then in 2020, um, I married my beautiful husband, Greg. And so now um, I have Bobby Leesley. So, um, and I just like to share that um, the YES program has been um, so informative and um, so helpful to everyone, and I'm grateful to my mom for participating in the study with, with us. And uh, in order to share these um, pictures up here on the left, this is when, um, that's my husband, Greg, and I, and we were doing the um, YES research at the railroad station where we did exper scientific experiments with children. We had umbrellas and t-shirts and all kinds of ways of showing the children what could get through um, the sun, how, how strong the sun is. Can it get through a t-shirt? Can it get through um, the, an, an umbrella? Um, can it get through lotion? And we did all these scientific experiments with children so they can learn how important it is to really protect themselves um, from being out in the sun exposure. Um, so, and then on the right is a picture of my mom and I just visiting together. And then um, on the lower left, that's one of the presentations we did for Suzanne's story, just um, getting the um, high school, the indigenous students involved in um, learning how to prevent skin cancer, breast cancer, um, learning about cigarette smoke and how dangerous that is for them, um, and just learning all kinds of things, all kinds of ways to prevent any kind of cancer whatsoever. And then on the right, um, here I am with Steve Tamayo. Um, he's one of our great artists, and we did um, Buffalo Busket Buckskin Buddies with him. He's um, you know, he's helped us and that's where the um, nice Native American and indigenous um, high school students worked and um, they made an um, animal of their choice that was representative of ind indigenous to them. And we had those on display. Um, so Steve Tamayo works with us with all the um, Indian Yes programs. So I'm so grateful to have worked with him and Regina and with my mom for sharing everything. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Bobby. And I I will add that when Bobby started with this program, she, she was in Native American Studies, um, in the Native American Studies program and also an art student and an artist, um, which is what led us to really um, approaching this, this case study project from an arts-based perspective and, um, and involving portraiture, which is the picture you see of, of Bobby with a, a beautiful portrait of her mom, uh, Suzanne, wearing, wearing the Yes t-shirt. So <laughs> um, that's a fun one for us. Um, so we'll share more about that project as we, as we move forward here. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. Um, so I'm just going to share and I'm going to try to move kind of quickly because I'd like more time for us to share with with Bobby and, and Suzanne, but um, the Youth Enjoy Science program uh, has three PIs, uh, Maurice Godfrey, who's uh, at the Monroe Meyer Institute at University of Nebraska Medical Center, Joyce Solheim, who's in the Buffett Cancer Center and does uh, more work on pan uh, pancreatic cancer research, and then myself, um, who works out of the College of Public Health and does more community-based participatory research and prevention and cancer education work with the YES program. And Dr. Uh, Karen Hastings, who's uh, our partner at the University of Arizona um, in their cancer center and college of medicine where there's lab-based research, cancer research. And she is actually a dermatologist, which is uh, awesome and a great fit uh, for, for our program and, uh, and one of our mentors in our program as well. And then Aislinn Rookwood, who's our program manager. So grateful to all of them for, for making this program what it is. and. The image you see here is our uh, like visual mission statement. And it, this was created by uh, the late artist Donnell Keeler. 
um, who was a local Ponca artist um, that created this for us. Um, and, and he actually also died of, of cancer. And so it's part of part of his story and he's part of our project and we uh, we recognize him and honor him in, in this, this moving this work forward. So this program is an R25 um, project that's been funded by National Cancer Institute with the aim of really increasing diversity, specifically Native American representation in cancer related careers, research and health professions. Um, we have a lot of programming within the YES program, like a lot of different aspects of it. We have clubs in the schools and camps over the summertime. Um, oops, I moved forward too fast, sorry. Um, and then we have internships and engagement and outreach. And so we've mentioned some of that. Bobby has been involved in the internship for years. And then, um, and then, a, and then a lot of the work that we've conducted, we share in outreach. So for example, art exhibitions um, and sharing our work with the community. Um, so here's some images about our of our summer camp and the things that students get to be involved in. We kind of move quickly through these, and then these are some of some of our um, high school and undergraduate in cancer research interns. And you see Bobby there in the group as well. Oops. Um, so you see some students are working in the lab and then some are working more with community, some are doing portraits okay. with family members. Um, and this is all part of our, our cancer research program. So this is housed, as I said, in, in the College of Public Health at UNMC, which is the image above. The image in the middle is our Buffett Cancer Center. These are both in Omaha, Nebraska. And then, oops, we're partnered with, sorry, I'm not handling these images very well. <laughs> um, and then we're partnered with the College of Medicine in Phoenix at the University of Arizona. So we have interns, cancer research interns working in all of these sites. And this is some of what that looks like. You know, our, our cancer research interns, Bobby uh, is one of them. They, you know, they conduct research. They even design their own research like Bobby did, the leaders. I mean, like truly, Bobby's just been an exceptional cancer researcher in our program and has designed, you know, her own study, conducted it, analyzed the data, and then presented it, as you see here in posters. That She'll share that one with you as we move forward. And then, um, and then also has been first author on a on a paper that we published about this case study in the American Medical Association Journal of Ethics. So um, and that's I think how National Native Network found us. So good work, Bobby, getting our work out there. Yeah, I was going to say in the upper right corner Oops, that um, that picture as of the Native American gardens, which we also did in the summer, both mm -hmm. at the Yates Elementary School and at you mm -hmm. know um, University of Nebraska Omaha and that's where we grew the three sisters corn beans and squash and that's just showing how how tall that corn got because we really nurtured it and took care of it just like we should take care of ourselves and and our skin so and then and then the lower left is where I was presenting um, for um, a, a national skin cancer um, at UNO and then on the right is some of our yes student participants um, who are probably part of the SHEP program, which is a summer program where they come and they explore all of the research needed to um, go to different classrooms, find out what careers they want to get go into. Um, so, and then on the upper uh, left-hand corner is our researchers and they are uh, researching skin cancer. So thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Yes. And that's Bobby in the picture in the garden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then this is um, just an image of one of the projects that we did that Bobby mentioned before where students um, created their own um, like soft sculptures of, of their wellness stories in relation to like cancer prevention specifically. And then we exhibited that within um, our library, uh, public library, and then um, in other uh, other sites um, at Omaha Public Schools in their administration office and in, in other ways. So this was a fun project. And Steve Tamayo um, is the one who really uh, helped us with the artistic design and ideas behind it. And here are some of our cancer research interns with the YES program. You see Bobby there on the far left. Happy as always, super smiley, <laughs> enjoying her work. Um, and then here's Bobby presenting at, we have 
um, every other year we have a large gathering of native students, high school and undergraduate students that come together in South Sioux City for a full day workshop and activities called Cancer Biology and U Day. And this is when um, we really explore cancer prevention and do more activities like Bobby shared um, that, that are hands-on lessons about cancer prevention. So we had one specific to uh, skin cancer where we did um, all of the activities Bobby was describing, we did with another group where we apply sunscreen um, and check um, and they can go through this whole process of yeah, using umbrellas or, or clothing or sunscreen to see what really is um, impacting us and how we can protect our skin better. What does the best, the, what is the best method for that? So they explore that. And then we talk about cancer prevention and, um, and within that Bobby presented her, the case study and, and Suzanne's story and portraiture involved in her project with all the students. And this was their absolute favorite part of the whole day and all of our evaluation um, data from the students suggested that, that this was the most valuable piece and that they learned the most from this. And we really believe that it's um, part of that is because it really is culture-based and that, that we're storytelling and, and sharing real lived experiences that, that our students can relate to. Um, not only in the method that we're sharing the information, like it's not just a textbook, um, but also um, but also in relating to the people involved and um, and the relationships. So we give out to our students within this activity a skin cancer fact sheet that just kind of covers the different types of cancer, which uh, Suzanne has shared with us that she has experienced all three of those types of skin cancer. Um, so it's a, just a real general overview, nothing too in depth, but trying to at least um, you know, raise their awareness to, to the fact that there are different types of skin cancer. So this is just one piece of the information that we share with them. And then we also share um, ways to identify it. So as, as Suzanne was sharing, she, she can identify, you know, when there's something that's concerning to share with her, her uh, dermatologist and tell them, oops, I'm click happy here. Um, so these are a couple of other uh, pieces of information that we share with students at that Cancer Biology and New Day that's focused on skin cancer. And then we have the students do um, an infographic where they create kind of like a meme or an, um, an infographic to share and spread the message of cancer prevention. So they choose one or more of these captions and then create from their own um, perspective and in an artistic medium, um, a way of, of promoting cancer prevention. And this is a really fun activity. And Bobby has been, thanks so much. I see people saying they like this method. <laughs> um, Bobby has been a leader in these activities and a mentor to our younger students in the YES program. So um, she has helped lead a lot of activities, not just the sharing of Suzanne's story, but, but also all of um, the sunscreen activities, the hands-on lessons and those um, come from, and they're in our references, but those come from a, what's called science takeout kits. So anyone can have access to those. They're, they're, they're a little bit costly, but, um, but, but accessible. And then they send you all of the resources all in a bag. And then we just work through them with mentors and coaches with the students. And then um, part of what Bobby has done in, in her work with portraits of Suzanne was just really like collating, uh, synthesizing the data that we have around Native Americans and skin cancer. So these are some of the things that we found from reading other people's research. This is not our own research, but we just want to share with you the things that we found to be really important as we were researching this subject. And there is very little research in this area. So I'm just going to move through these and let you read. And when we say sun protective scores, that means like behaviors to protect yourself from the sun, like scoring um, high in that would mean there's a high level of sun protective behaviors. Like Suzanne and Bobby have been talking about like wearing sunscreen or a hat or clothing or, you know, avoiding the sun, those kinds of things.
So like a good Cherokee, I've got seven items per slide here. <laughs> so this is it for this slide. I'll give you one more minute to read through these. For us, some of these were really surprising numbers, you know, um, and definitely motivating our work. Um, yeah, the first one really shows that 10% of Native Americans believe that they cannot develop skin cancer. We found through our research that that is simply not true, that Native Americans can definitely develop skin cancer just as anyone else can. Yeah. So all the more reason to be doing the work we're doing in, in skin cancer education um, with the youth that we get to work with. Absolutely. Thanks, Bobby. And here's a few more. Seven more to be specific. <laughs> yeah, so our stage of diagnosis is, is much later when compared to white patients. So we come in and notice that once it's harder to, um, to treat. And part of our YES program is focused on workforce development. And so we want to increase the number of derma native dermatologists, right? Native doctors that can, um, can support us and, and take care of us in this effort of addressing skin cancer, preventing, treating, right? Part of this low number in, in people having skin cancer exams in Indian Health Service clinics is, is also related to our lack of funding for IHS um, and lack of access. And one cool positive note to end on is that there is a um, skin of color society that works really hard to promote awareness of an excellence within the skin of color dermatology. So they're doing a lot of work in, in education um, around these issues and it, they'd be a good resource if anyone's looking for that. And I'm gonna pass it off to Bobby from here to share a, a little bit more about your research study and the details of it. Thank yes, you. Hello. Thank you, Gina. Um, so I have done like uh, uh, several poster um, presentations. And um, so I was um, combining my art, um, art based degree with um, the cancer research. And um, when I, when um, my mom and I got together, and she was willing to participate and help with this. Um, I learned that when she was some time, when she was about six months old, she was out in the buggy, um, you know, getting a sun, <laughs> suntan, which, which um, then there really was, weren't a lot of sunscreens around. I don't even know if they were even developed yet, you know, back in her day, you know, in 1931. Um, I don't think sunscreens had even come out yet, and people didn't really know that much that they were um, shouldn't really get too much sun exposure. So, um, and my mom also used to wear her swimsuits out swimming at three years old. She she'd wear them out, and just everybody went out to play in the sun, which which is really really wonderful. Um, but I think people need to take more caution towards being in the sun. And then um, these uh, pictures for the poster go just show the um, skin cancer, what it looks like, what to look for. You know, if you see any um, raises or bumps on your skin, um, then you definitely need to see a dermatologist. And it's also good to go to a dermatologist um, on a regular basis, just so you can be checked so that you make sure that you don't have any skin cancer. Um, a lot of people don't think it's an important thing to just go see a dermatologist, but it really is. And especially if you develop anything at all that's like a bump on your skin or anything that, that looks um, not familiar to the other coloring on your skin, then you definitely wanna go into a dermatologist to get checked to see if, um, if that's something to be biopsied and to be concerned about. 
Um, did you want to add anything to this one? No, that's fine. No. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. You're so. doing a good job, Bobby. <laughs> really good job. So are you, Mom? So, so anyway, so this is just um, our poster presentation, and we presented in um, North um, Dakota for this presentation too, and um, several times. And this this is just showing like the different stages of can skin cancer and what to look for. So, thanks, Bobby. And you did inspire me when all of this started years ago to go in and get checked because I noticed something that was off, and I ended up finding something that was precancerous. So, you've saved my life. Just, just <laughs> one of many, I'm sure. So, thank you. And then I think we can move forward into some of. I think Bobby, do you have control now to move these or? Um, let me see here. So this was, um, um, so this was what we presented on um, published story on Suzanne's story. And I did the portraits to go along with um, what she was um, experiencing um, through her life. And I did um, eight and seven or eight interviews all together, just to um, be sure that we were, you know, on the right track with this and to see um, how this um, skin cancer developed in her life. And, um, and this is the front page of the story where she's wrapped in a blanket um, for protection, a beautiful, a beautiful quilt that actually came from Canada. So, and then in this um, next slide, um, so this is from the time that she was six months old she loved to go out in the sun and um, they used a uh, baby oil and iodine to promote like when she got to college, they actually used to um, sunbathe out on the sun deck and use um, baby oil and iodine to promote a better tan. So this was, um, she loved the sun since the time she was very young. And then um, uh, so here she had had some melanoma. This is a picture taken after the melanoma had healed, but the melanoma was um, on her arm and they actually had to take out a big, a big chunk just to get rid of the melanoma, but thank goodness it didn't spread to other parts. That's why you want to go in for early detection because um, the melanoma spreading could be deadly. So it was a good thing that they got it all and, and that um, she survived that. And then um, this, here's where she trained for the Olympics and she would had uh, pre-skin cancer, basal cell uh, squamous, the second state, uh, stage of uh, skin cancer. And then she just went on to say how it appears and it looks white and crusty on her arm and then that she goes to the uh, doctor, like she said, every two or three months now, just to, you know, check for new cancers coming in. And um, they, they may not notice right away, but she can notice melanoma on herself um, because she's had melanoma and she's had all the other types of skin cancer. So the melanoma was a black dot, which was extremely shiny and very small, like a pencil head, and it didn't look right. So she asked the doctor what this was. And then the doctor said that they must get that diagnosed. And then they found out when that was melanoma. And she feels very, I, she can tell you herself, but she feels very fortunate in her life and, and her, um, her and her friends, they don't even want to talk about cancer or anything negative. They just want to talk about positive things because they, she feels very fortunate, you know, to have so many children and to have lived through it, through all of this experience. <laughs> And then that's her, um, a painting of her. She's wearing her Yes t-shirt. She's getting in with the rest of us to prevent cancer and cancer research. <laughs> and then there's just um, her foot and you never even think that you can actually get cancer on your foot, but um, she did have some spots on her foot and 
this is just a painting, a drawing of, um, you know, the skin cancer even on her foot. And that's another one with her yes shirt on, just chilling. <laughs> and um, so um, that last slide was just showing how, um, you know, everyone, you know, has learned from the story and everything. So thank you very much. Yeah, participants said that vo uh, viewing Suzanne's portraits, they hear Suzanne telling them themselves to protect yourself and they, they see joy and encouraging a message to live a long, happy, enjoyable life. Enjoy the sun, but protect yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. So I just want to sh share real quickly too, if we could go back before we move into questions and comments and thank you Bobby so much for sharing your study with all of us and Suzanne thank you for being a part of all of this and for sharing your lived experiences um I, I think we're hearing in chat how powerful it is just to share these stories and um and we know from our experience with the students we get to work with what an impact it has had um and I, I just want to share also like how incredible this study has been and how Bobby designed it. She she conducted how many interviews did you conduct, Bobby, with your mom? I, I think we did seven and yeah. then there was an eighth like um, after the story was published to see how she felt about it and everything. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, Bobby and Suzanne spent a lot of time talking, talking through the, the details of this, um, and not just not just specific to the cancer, but the whole overall experience and the importance of this work. And um, so Bobby did, Bobby and Suzanne participated in hours of discussion about this that was then um, those interviews were transcribed and analyzed and, um, and then, and then Bobby also did a number of portraits of Suzanne, which you got to see here today. And then those were also uh, analyzed um, as from an analysis team in an arts-based way. And then we wrote a paper about it and I'm happy to share that with people as well. So um, I'm not sure how we can get that to you best, but there is a publication and we're really happy to share that if anyone's interested. And, um, and then, and I think, I do think just how beautiful and positive and strengths-based this story, you know, Suzanne's life is. You know? um, and Suzanne, how how powerful it is that you live through all of this. You take good care of yourself. You're continuing to, you know, go to the doctors, do the self screenings, um, take care of yourself, and still enjoy the sun in the ways that um, are safe, right? And so. Any yeah. messages you have to share with the overall audience who are, you know, for, for health professionals and just just native peoples, you know, who are who who want to live long, happy lives like you. We want to hear more from you about that, what you have to say. Have fun in the sun and be <laughs> careful, <laughs> but have fun. Enjoy everything. Enjoy the summer and the sun and play ball or swim or do whatever you'd like but have a good time, take care of yourself. And I wanted to just add too that the story is in the AMA Journal of F Ethics. So if they wanna read the story, they can read it there, so. Um. <laughs> and Bobby, do you wanna share when, when Suzanne says, take care of yourself, do you wanna share a little bit about what you've learned about what that looks like? Um, well, I, I think take care of yourself means always protect yourself from the, um, from the dangers of the sun and, um, you know, smoking and drinking too. That was another thing that my mom used to be a smoker, but she took care of herself and she quit in for how many years now, mom? 20. For 20 years. Or, and I'm so proud of her for doing that. She just put up the king size Chesterfields and that was the end of it. You know, I'm so, so happy for her that she was able to do that. And I think her longevity in life, you know, was created by her being able to, you know, pull away from that. So, um, but I think 
what she means is always protect yourself, but enjoy life, but just, you know, be really careful of all your choices, every, everything that you decide. Thank you. Awesome. So we have about, oh, eight minutes or so. So we have a little bit of time for our questions. Um, we do have some questions in the question box. So we'll go ahead and start tackling those. If anybody else has questions, please feel free to type them into the question box. So this person here says, where on your body did you first notice the skin cancer symptom? And that is for Suzanne? Yes, I would my, think so, yeah. Uh, on my chest. Okay. Uh, and then the next person here says, since she loves swimming, do you still wear, or do you wear sunblock now? How much do you use? Maybe um, talk a little bit about how you apply that and when you, when you use it and how you use it. I put a little bit of lotion on my nose, mainly, my face and my upper arms when I'm swimming. I try very hard to still swim and, and still be in the sun. Excellent. Um, this person here asks, uh, where do you receive treatment? IHS or a private provider? I don't know if maybe you wanted to expand on that as well too. A private provider, uh, a Dr. Lehman in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I go to a Tulsa Dermatology Clinic and they have about, I believe they have six doctors there. They're all dermatologists and it's, it's kind of a nice place to go. They're all friendly and the doctor has been great with me. Excellent. And the native, I was going to say the native Americans can sometimes like your clinics can refer, refer you to a dermatologist as well. If you, if you need help, you can go to the Indian clinic and you can get a referral to a dermatologist as well. Yes, because usually they, the uh, Native American clinics don't have a dermatologist right there, so they do have to refer you out to out to one. Excellent. Um, this person here says, "How do you feel about higher SPF in sunscreens? Does it really matter how much?" Uh, higher of SPF you use. This person says that they heard the SPF doesn't make a difference once you go past 30 SPF or so. No, so I, I don't I don't know if anybody wants to chime in on that. <laughs> I don't think that it matters that much uh, just to cover yourself up with it. And the SPF, I, I really, I don't know what to say about that. I don't think that it matters that much. Uh, in fact, I don't use a high number because it turns you white and my skin's not white. It's, it's kind of tannish. So, uh, so it doesn't matter really. Just try whatever you, you think you should. Um, it looks like that there might have been some questions in the chat box. I'm going to just kind of scroll through those as best I can and try to answer what we what I can spot here uh, before the top of the hour. Uh, this person here says, does it start like a pencil dot when it begins? Um, I guess uh, when you first saw the spots um, appear, uh, how did they look initially? It could be red, brown, black or raised, it could be, it looks like, might look like a wart that's raised and crusty looking. And that's usually the second stage of cancer. That's usually squamous. And then you might have a spot on your arms or actually anywhere. And if it starts to bleed, that's basal cell skin cancer and that has to come out or it, it won't stop bleeding until it's taken care of. So you must go to the doctor when you see that. And the pencil head was the melanoma, right? Yes, the pencil head was the melanoma and it was shiny black. And the doctor said, well, we better look, we better diagnose this. So they did. Usually they just go ahead and do it, but this was, they were worried about it. In fact, they sent me to a hospital to have that done. So I'm glad I went and got it over with. And I uh, still okay. be, excuse me. Go ahead. No, that's <laughs> that's okay. No, I still love to be outside. I really do. 
Um, this person here says, can you share what some of the learnings from these structured intergenerational projects? Uh, and I guess this is for everyone. Oh, yes, I could share uh, to be very careful out in the sun. Don't stay out in the sun all day and get burned. And But please go out and enjoy it. Have fun. That's what life is all about, having fun and, and being careful, but going outside and playing. You just don't see people outside anymore. And I think it's sad because they should be out. They should be outdoors and take care of themselves in the sun. And some of the some of the um, projects that you might be talking about, I think we can get a hold of um, send a, a reference list over um, to to the Yes program and some of the programs we have at UNO. Um, but then there's some national programs, I'm sure as well. I think Gina, um, you know, if they're asking about how to get involved with a um, you know community events and things. Yeah, and I'm happy. I, I'm happy to add into chat to links to our guest program. And um, I mentioned to someone else uh, that I'm also part of the iHeart group, which is Indigenous Health Education and Resources Task Force, which is a group of us nationwide who are working to pull together all of the scholarships and resources and opportunities for Native youth to be involved. Um, so that includes curriculum, curricular resources, but also, you know, ways to engage. Uh, Native peoples in in all of our efforts to um, to promote health, you know, so cancer is a piece of that and, and cancer prevention and research and treatment is a piece of that and that's what the yes program is really focused on and it um, has certainly impacted our, you know, the students that have been a part of it are moving on and and pursuing careers in the health professions and um, and and that will make a difference because we know that our we know that native peoples respond better um, to to native health professionals and just having that what's called cultural congruency you know gets better outcomes as far as like health outcomes are concerned like you know screenings going to the doctor thing you know it's just a, a um, there's there's more success in that regard with like following recommendations from a doctor that's that is an, a native doctor right so so we want to have more native dermatologists native uh, health professionals who can be those that are caring caring for us and so that's part of what what the yes program and so many other programs across the nation are, are doing all right, fantastic. So if there's any other questions, uh, Regina's uh, email is on the screen right now, regina.robbins at unmc.edu. And I'm sure she'll be happy to pass along any questions or help uh, find any find any answers for you. We do have a, another webinar coming up at the end of the month, which will be let me see here, titled Addressing Commercial Tobacco Disparities Among California's Tribal Communities Using a Social Determinants of Health Lens. And that's going to take place on Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. And you can get more details at keepitsacred.org at our website. And we'll be also posting uh, information on our social media as well if you follow us at Keep It Sacred on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram at NNN Keep It Sacred. Uh, you, we will be posting uh, further information about the webinar on July 18th. Uh, if you're planning to obtain CEUs for this webinar, please complete the evaluation survey. Uh, it will be emailed over within 24 hours after this event, so keep an eye on your email tomorrow. Uh, and we'll also be posting an archive of this webinar within 24 hours as well. So keep an eye on our website and our social media and it should be appearing there here pretty soon. With that, we're at the top of the hour. So to respect everybody's time that's attending today and our panelists as well, thank you very much. And we hope you have yourselves a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, thank you everyone, Wando. Thank you, Suzanne and Bobby. So good to be with you. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was good to, to see you. You look great. So do you. Enjoy your visit. I'm coming to Oklahoma soon. I told Bobby. So oh, good. Good. <laughs> we'll get a visit. Uh-huh. Yeah. So good cool. to see you guys. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Thank you. <laughs> with all of us. This was a big group. <laughs>